All right. So did I start this? Yes. Okay. We're in section 5.7. And we're using. Uh, we're doing geometry with coordinates. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> what uh, we've done a little bit on um, working with uh, geometry with coordinates. At the very beginning of the unit, we had some problems and on the quiz as well, where we plotted points, we graphed the points, and then we counted squares to figure out the base and the height of whatever our shape was to find our area. So we're going to do a little bit of that today, but we're also going to we're going to go a little a little further with this. So so that's the idea is we're we're talking about where we're we're plotting our vertices, that kind of thing. Let's um let's put the electronics away, please. Um, we have a few tools that we need. So for all of these, for all of these, we have some formulas. Uh, we have our points: x1, y1, and x2, y2. So we're talking about we're talking about points. We have a graph, basically. The distance between these two points. And we might already have this written down. I'm just writing it down again, just in case we don't. The distance is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So that's the distance between those two points. And we said this comes from the Pythagorean theorem. A couple of pointers on the distance formula. You should always end up with a positive number inside the square root here. When we're talking about a distance, we should always end up with a positive number. So if you end up with, um, so once we square everything, we end up with a positive number. You could end up with a negative number in, in here, but once you square it, you end up with a positive number. So once you square everything and add it together, you should always end up with a positive. If you end up with a negative, you've done, you made some kind of mistake. All right, so the distance between those two points, this is our distance from them. The midpoint. And it's important to remember that the midpoint is a point. So we have an x and a y at x1 plus x2 divided by 2. That's my x and my y1 plus y2 divided by 2 is the y. So this is the point x, y. So we get a point here. Not just a number, but a point. Another point that we could put on our graph. And the other tool that we're going to use that I want to work with is the slope. Slope y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And if it helps you remember, rise over run. The y's tell us how far up and down that we go. So the y has to do with the rise. X's tell us left and right. So that has to do with the run. So the slope is the rise over the run, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. We just take our whatever whatever we have for these points, plug them into our formulas to work with. Who can tell tell us what we know about the slopes of parallel lines? They have the same slope. The parallel lines, they're, they're slanted the same amount. So if we keep them parallel, we can think of them as slanted the same amount. So parallel lines 
have the same slope. So when we're using coordinates, that's how we tell if lines are parallel, if they have the same slope. And then I think some of you were thinking about perpendicular lines. What do you know about the slopes of perpendicular lines? Opposite, so something's opposite. What's, what's opposite? The rise and the run are switched around, and what else has changed? The, the sign changes. So for perpendicular lines, we'll say we, um, just in shorthand, flip the fraction and change the sign. And the way we said it in kind of in technical technical language, we said that. They were negative reciprocals. So whatever the fraction is, one half, we flip it over, it's two over one, and we change the sign, make it negative. So to perpendicular lines, we flip the fraction and change the sign. That's how we tell if lines are perpendicular when we're using coordinates, is if we can flip the fraction and change the sign, we get the slope of the other line. So these are our tools. But well, we're going to take this just a little further than we've done before, and rather than work with points like 2, 3, 7, 8, negative 5, whatever, um, we're going to work with variables. And the reason that we're going to work with <coughs> variables is part of what makes math um, kind of a, a useful tool is that we can make it a little more abstract, and then it, it applies to bigger situations. So we're, we're we're being a little more abstract with what we're talking about, and this helps us to, 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 do, to work on our math so that then we'll be able to apply it in bigger, bigger situations when we need to later on. So that's why we're looking at coordinates as, as variables. So let's look at what, we're, what we mean when we say that. So we'll do a couple of examples. We want to find... We want to find the slope between the points PQ and RS. So rather than numbers for, for the x's and y's, we have variables. PQ could be 3, 7, and RS could be negative 2, 5. So, so they, they just stand for some number. But we're going to do the same thing we've done before when we did have numbers. And my suggestion was label our points x1, y1, x2, y2, and then we just use our formula, just like we did before. So the slope is y2 minus y1, s minus q, over x2 minus, y, x2 minus x1, r minus p. And that's all we can do with it. That would be the slope between those two, the, of the segment between those two points. Y2 minus Y1, X2 minus X1. We don't have numbers for them, so that's all we can do with them. But we treat these letters just like we, just as if we, we were dealing with numbers. Let's say we want to find the distance between these two points. So we have our points labeled. Now we just plug these into our distance formula. The distance is square root of x2 minus x1, r minus p squared, plus y2 minus y1, s minus q squared. And because we don't know what those numbers are, that's all we can do. If then we figured out some numbers, we could plug the numbers in there. But that's all we can do with it. Now. Questions on those two? Let's look at a midpoint.
let's look at the midpoint between <coughs> zero zero. So we have a we have numbers there, and two p two q. So we'll do the same thing. I'm going to label x1, y1, x2, y2. And again, it doesn't matter which one we call x1, y1, x2, y2, as long as we keep the ones together and the twos together. And I'm going to say the midpoint. Plug into our formula. x1 plus x2, 0 plus 2p, divided by 2. That's my x, and my y is y1 plus y2 divided by 2. And I can simplify this a little bit. What is 0 plus 2p? Just 2p. And what's 0 plus 2q? 2q. And what can I do with these twos that are in the numerator and denominator? I can just cancel them. Two divided by two is just one. So my answer for the midpoint is the point P, Q. And that is my X and my Y. So we just treat these these letters just like they were our numbers and work with them until we until we can't do anything else. Any questions on that? All right. This gets interesting when we start working with shapes. So let's look at how we do this, use these variables with some shapes. So for this problem. We have a graph here. So let me draw our, our graph. And we have a we have some points here. And we're going to draw, we're going to connect those. Like so. And we have a nice rectangle. We're going to call it A, B, C, D. So the problem tells us this is a rectangle. And what we do with problems like this, usually the problems like this will be to find find the coordinates of the missing vertices. So we know that A is at 0, 0. B is at some point 0, P. C is at question mark, question mark. And D is at the point Q, 0. So we're trying to figure out these question marks here. So let's label our points. 0, 0. This one is 0p. This one is qp. Whoops. Uh, this one is question mark, question mark. That's the one we're trying to figure out. And this one is at q0. D is at q0. So what a problem like this is asking us <coughs> when we're looking at this coordinate is how far left or right? That's going to be our first number. And how far up or down? That's going to be our second number. The first number tells us left or right. The second number tells us up or down. So let's look at this point. If this is a rectangle, how far up am I going to get to point B on this side? P. I'm going up by P. So this side is P units long, whatever P is. So 
What do we know about this side of the rectangle? What's its length compared to this side? They're the same. So this side has to be P also. So how far up am I going to get to point C? P, right? I'm going from here, I'm going up P. So this number has to be P. And what do we know how far, how far to the right am I going to get to point D? Q units. I'm going to the right Q. Well then, if this is a rectangle, how far to the right do I have to go to get over here? I have to go Q also. So that point has to be Q. I'm going over the same amount as I go to get here. So C would be the point Q, P. So what these questions are asking is figure out how far left or right, how far up or down from the information that we have and what we know about the shape. Questions on that example? Let's look at a different shape. Say we have a triangle this time. So let's draw in our triangle, and we know some we know something sp special about this triangle. So that will let us solve the problem. So we have that point A is a zero zero. B is at the point A, B, and C is at question mark, question mark. That's what we're trying to figure out. What are the coordinates of point C? But we know one other thing. Triangle ABC is um, isosceles. with segment AB equals seg congruent to segment BC. So the triangle is isosceles. So I'm going to label my vertices. You know this is 0, 0. This is AB. And we're trying to figure this one out. Well, let's do the easy one first. How far up or down is point C? It's on the x-axis, right? So it's it's the same amount up or down as point A. So what does it have to be? Zero. <coughs> now we need to figure out how far left or right, how far to the right I go. Well, let's do our little trick that we often do with isosceles triangles. I'm going to draw this little segment at a 90 degree angle. What does this segment do to the base of this isosceles triangle? Cuts it in half. How far over am I going on this first half? I go over to whatever the x is here. I'm going over by a. Go over by a to get here. So if it cuts it in half, how long is this segment? It's also a. And how long is the whole base? I have a, I have one a and another a, so I have two a. I have a plus a, so two a. So that whole thing is two a. So I go over by two a to get to point c. So c equals a point two a zero. And if, if point B were at like, say, 2, 3, the point 2, 3, we would know that C would have to be at 4, 0. So we have to go over 2 to get to here, 2 to get to there, so the total is 4. 
we don't know what that length is, if all we know is that it's A, then it's 2A, 0. Up. Um, so to go over, we knew from here to get over to point D, I go to the right by Q units. So to get over here, I have to go to the right by Q, whatever Q is, 10, whatever, whatever number that has to be. So in order for this to be a rectangle, I know I have to go the same amount to the right to keep the sides even. So I had to go over by Q, whatever that is, to get to point C also. So I'm going over, over by that amount to get here. So I have to go to the right by that amount to get here. I go up. This tells me my up. I go up by P to get here. In order to get have the sides stay the same, I have to go up by the same amount to get to this point. So if this up has to be the same as this up. This right has to be the same as this right in order for this to be a rectangle. Okay? All right, let's look at one more example, a little more, a little, little trickier. Well, not too bad, and then we'll be done. So for this one, we have a, we're going to start with a parallelogram. So let me draw the parallelogram in here. <coughs> so there's my parallelogram. Let's call it uh, the parallelogram uh, D, E, F, G. And we know that this is a parallelogram. And we are given that we have some vertices. D is at 0, 0. Uh, e, point E, has coordinates C, B. F is question mark, question mark. We don't know what that is. And G is A, 0. So I'm going to label my points. This is 0, 0. This is uh, C, B. We don't know this one, so we're trying to figure that out. And G is at A, I'm going to move this over, A0. All right, let's figure out the easy one first. So we're figuring out how far left or right, how far up or down. So if this is a parallelogram, how far up do I have to go to get to point F? Now remember that this, the first number tells me left, right. The second number tells me up or down. So point E, I go up by B units, whatever B is. I go up B to get to E. So this tells me up. In order for this to be a parallelogram, I have to go the same amount up to get to F. So this would have to be B, going the same amount up. Now the left to right is a little trickier, but what I'm going to do is draw this little triangle here, and draw this little triangle here. How far to the right do I go to get to this point at the, at the bottom of this triangle? I'm going over by C. I'm going from here over C. If this is going to be a parallelogram, if I'm here at, at this point, how much further over 
do I have to go to be right underneath this point? I have, these triangles have to be the same. So I have to go over C. Well, I've already gone over by A. How do I write that I've gone over C more? A plus C. If I'm at 5 here and I go over 3 more, I go 5 plus 3. So I'm going over A plus C. So that would be A plus C. So F equals a point A plus C. So I go over uh, A plus C. There we go. I go over A to get here, and I go over another C to get right under here. And I go up by B, so I'm the same amount up at this point. So we're trying to figure out how far left or right, how far up or down. Questions on that example? Okay.